can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. First thing on the agenda is the uh, East Pike renovation admin HVAC replacement bid. We're going to talk through the bid results. The bid results or the bid was held last Tuesday. Uh, since then, both Bucard Horn, CJL, and Jared has uh, gone through the bid results. We did have one electrical contractor that withdrew their bid, Bittner. Uh, the total cost is one million four hundred nineteen thousand three six hundred and three dollars. The general contractor low bidder was JC Orr. The electrical is Westmoreland Electric. The plumbing is First American and the mechanical is First American. And from what I understand, uh, Jared held, held a phone conference last Tuesday with CJL and Buclard Horn and everybody was comfortable with those contractors and those bid amounts. They did come in close to what our estimate was, I think just a little bit over. Uh, the project timeline is the discussion tonight at Building Grounds. Hopefully we can make a motion to move forward with this or a approve a motion to go forward with this and then that'll be placed on the december 5th meeting agenda construction will begin in the spring of 2023 and then august and i forget the date is of 2023 is substantial completion uh, jared did i asked him to put that updated capital improvement spreadsheet has a link on the agenda, which he did with these updated prices. And without going through the whole uh, couple pages there, bottom line is the additional funding required for all planned projects increased by $178,604. That's on the bottom of the second page in the red line where it says additional funding required. So, so uh jared or jared do you have anything to say or cheney or elijah or eric and i'll start with jared first yes sir i'll certainly let eric and eli talk but we did as you said we met last week um we did a phone conference after the bids were due i can say i know it doesn't seem like a whole lot but in today's environment i think we were very pleased with the number of overall bids that we got um you know, it was two or three per specialty, but that's still pretty good in the current environment. Um, one of the big things, the bids were due, um, they were due last Tuesday, but that was after a two week um, kind of extension. Um, and we did that, as you know, and the committee, we've been talking about it a good bit lately is because of the delay in the uh, possible units for the admin HVAC system. Um, I just wanted to let the committee and the board members know, and certainly Eli and Eric can um, also talk about it as well. But everybody who bid in the first American who is, you know, the kind of the low bidder right now for the mechanical all bid with the understanding that they would have a unit to us by August to at least, you know, the latest in August to have it hooked up um, so that this project could be complete. Um, there was a lot of back and forth on the timeline as to when we could get those units. Um, we did find specs for a unit that had a, a greatly reduced lead time, which CJL reviewed and we're okay with including as part of the possible uh, units for this project. Um, there was no specific unit bid as part of this project, just a list of what we um, approved as possible units. So, but again, Everybody who bid was with the understanding that this project would be complete by August of 2023, so. Okay, thanks, Jared. And, and that reminded me too, the two manufacturers that could supply the RTUs in a, in a quicker time frame 
those and Eric, you, you you know, correct me if I'm wrong. The the weights of those were a little bit more, so there was uh, in the addendum there was some verbiage put that there would be a, a small minor uh, strengthening for those rooftop units. Uh, that's correct, Terry. There was uh, um, we added Addison and Aon, um, and they were both slightly heavier. Uh, but not substantially heavier. There's just some minor um, reinforcing of the uh, current choice. This needs to happen. Uh, we put details out and additional verbiage in the addendum to cover that. Um, <clears throat> both of those units, as of the writing of that addendum, had a 20-week uh, or less lead time, which meets the project schedule. Um, we didn't exclude the, the original uh, train and, and uh, JCI and uh, carrier units. Um, but at the time they had a, a longer lead time. So we made it a requirement that all the contractors meet 20 week or less. Okay. Anything else to add, Jer or, uh, Eric? Uh, no, I mean, you know, the, uh, other than as, as Jared said, you know, the, the bids came in, uh, you know, where we anticipated them. Um, you know, the, the, the mechanical bids were a little bit higher when we switched to the, uh, the VRF system. So that's why prices came in a little bit higher. Uh, but they, you know, they were anticipated uh, based on the increased kite, uh, price in my original study. So, um, yeah, all in all, uh, the, the MEP contractors, you know, I'm comfortable with, um, you know, I've worked with them before. First American isn't my favorite contractor, but, you know, they're in the game. They've done uh, projects bigger than this uh, that I've worked with them on and, you know, have been successful. So, uh, all in all, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with everything. Okay. Thanks. Elijah, anything to add? No, I think uh, Jared and Eric summarized it pretty well. I would echo everything that they've said. Um, mostly overall that we're happy with the number of bidders that we got in today's environment. We're happy with where the prices came in. I, I think we were close there on our estimate and what we were projecting. And I think um, it, it looks like we have, a, we have qualified low bidders um, that are going to be able to do the project for the school in the time that we wanted it done. Um, and I, I don't see, I, I don't see any glaring issues here. We've had everything, uh, checked internally, um, by a couple eyes, a couple sets of eyes, and, uh, we'll be issuing, uh, letters of recommendation for each of these contracts for award, but that does not preclude the school from, uh, awarding sooner if you, if you'd like to. Okay. Uh, the only thing, other thing I'll say is that I was looking back through my emails and it looked like we started designing of this project a year ago and we definitely started talking about it longer than a year ago. So the roof project here worked out on East Pike and we have this set up as of right now to be successful, to be completed. 2023 summer and have it done before the kids are back in school. And from what I understand, the principal and the school needs these additional classrooms that, that we're discussing in this project to be renovated. They said they're maxed out here at the school. So Cheney, anything further to add before? There's nothing more that I can add that hasn't already been said. Okay. Uh, open it up to the committee, Cinda. I'm fine with it. Tom? Um, if I understand this right, we're looking at uh, 1.4 million for yes. the administration, um, HVAC, the roof, and the work over at, at uh, the old administration of the East Pike. Those are those two projects are combined. Yes, but I don't think that this one four, and Jared, you can correct me, I don't think it includes the roof. That's a separate. Which roof? This roof. Right. This roof. Yeah, you, you're it? right, sir. The that the bid does not include the actual replacement of the roof. That will, is separate. Um, if the board That's approves already, this, that was already will, part of the, that was already part of the original um, roof contract. Then it was an addendum which we did not approve as part of the original contract with um, uh, Dora Last. Um, they. Mm. They gave us a price of around 57,000 the last time for that piece of the roof. I would imagine it will be somewhere around that. Um, but if this is approved, that comes off of state contract. Um, so as soon as 
if this project is approved, I can reach out to Doorlast and get that in place as well. So we're going to be a little bit south of 1.5 million to finish, the, but that's both projects. Right. Okay. All um, three projects. Okay. Yeah. It'd be the the roof, the HVAC in this entire building. Right. The roof of this building, which is the oldest roof we have left, and the, the old, HVAC and the remodeling of the old office, the old office space plus two more classrooms. I think maybe two yes. additional classrooms to the, to the west. one on each end. I thought. Yeah, I think it's actually two and of the other side. Maybe three of them. Yeah, okay. two and one. Right. Yeah. So, three it's not, total. so it's not only the 3,000 feet of the old administration wing, it's it's a classroom on this side and two classrooms on this side. Okay. And my only complaint is that that we're still neglecting Ben Franklin and we need to do this kind of work at Ben Franklin too. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, so we, we need to do this. I understand that. We also need to find a way to make Ben Franklin this nice. Right. Ron? I'm good with it. Jim? Sounds good. Okay. So it looks like, Jared, we have a head nods. We're going to put a motion on the December 5th agenda to approve these contracts. I can do that, sir. Okay. Moving on uh, to number two, the Eisenhower Remodel Additions Project Update. Not much to report there. Other than reading the paper today, uh, River Valley School District, who's rebuilding re, uh, a new stadium, in the article today, and, and you know, I'm assuming it's accurate, is their original estimate was around seven million. Now it's 14 million, and they're blaming it on supply chain and material, you know, costs <laughs> also. So when they, but, when they said us. when they said seven million. Um, there was no way they could do what they wanted to do for seven million. Yeah, it just it was it was it was it was a low ball number. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to uh, mention too was uh, Walter. You in your president's message, you mentioned about two things that we need to reach consensus on. The board does, and that's the time schedule for the renovation, and then the cost of the renovation. And I'm I'm going to throw out that we need to do that sooner than later because what i am not going to support is once we start once we decide we're going to start design work again on eisenhower i'm not going to support that until we have these other two decisions made first the the question came up terry um i'm not sure which board member raised the issue um but there was uh, to be a review by Bucart Horn on on the figures that were given us. Mm -hmm. And if I recall correctly, um, there was some pushback by board members that wanted to see that first before we went into that into that discussion about what that final number the board's willing to willing to spend. And so um, we haven't received that information yet from them or that review. And, and so, um, you know, trying to honor that request of, of having that information prior to the board having its discussion is the only reason I've kind of not tried to schedule anything. However, if the feeling of the board is to press on without that information to try to come to that agreement, then, then I can certainly, you know, schedule, uh, you know, a meeting to start that process sooner than later. But that's the reason I haven't done anything. Is 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 we're in anticipation of the, uh, of that review. Yeah. So let's. I guess we'll throw it out to the floor here then, because uh, yes. I mean it. It would be good to have that information, but I don't need that information if if. So, and and, you know, and, and it, it, Terry, I, I'm quite honest. I don't remember who it was that, yeah. that that raised that question, but that was a question that was raised at a at a. It may have been at that board meeting, um, the last board meeting. But but that's the yeah. main reason I've kind of um, uh, not been aggressive about setting that up is we haven't received that information. Yeah. And the reason I'm asking, we were under an aggressive schedule to begin with, and this Thursday will be four weeks since we basically stopped work on that 
project. And if we keep waiting, I, I, I'm with you 100%. You know, uh, so I, the only thing about it, Terry, the consensus of what I got out of our meeting with the board was nobody's going to support $32 million. I'm sure not. I will not support $32 million for that school renovation. I well, think do it's a you ridiculous know, figure. Do you Until need... we see, and we have a breakdown, the estimate they gave us was not a breakdown. I know I don't want to argue about it. But anyway, if we have to make cuts, you need to know what it's going to cost and what you're going to take the cuts off of. I can't make, I can't say take the gym down here if I don't know what it's going to cost to build a gym. I can't say take that bottom room off the south entrance if you don't know what it's going to cost to build it. My figures I looked at is like $5 million are charging us to build that bottom room off the south wing. With the basement, what they're charging, 400 or almost 300 some dollars square foot, and the part above it. But I'm not going to support for a 30 million. I'll be up front with anybody. If it's, well, over, if it's over 24 million or 26 million, I'm not supporting it. Well, I guess the my question is, though, is... Do you need that revised? Yeah, because if estimate if, if before was you wrong, can say he was wrong before you can say a dollar a month. Yes, like you just said, you're you're willing to support twenty four, but you're not willing to support thirty. That's what my point is. What if it is twenty four now? Then we can go ahead. But what if it's still thirty two? Then we got to make a decision. It might be let's not build it. Let's go in and remodel. So I not but, do everything. Yes. I, I, I don't still, think this community can afford $32 million this time. I'm still a little confused, though, Ron, with what you're saying, because what I'm trying to get to is have a meeting and get a consensus among the board of what dollar amount we are okay with. So are you okay with doing that, or do you have yeah, to Yeah, I, I don't have a problem if we do it among ourselves. Here's my problem. If we have to bring the architects in, they're going to charge us 100 bucks an hour. Now, for everything we do from here out, to my understand. So we get a consensus on that's what, yet that's yet to be determined. Right. That's what I'm thinking they're gonna do. When it's over. Right. Somewhere we're gonna make a settlement with them how it's gonna be, but that's my point. We're gonna pay for something if we continue without knowing the figure. If he comes back and says it's thirty two million, my position, I'm only speaking for myself, not the board, is I won't support that figure. Well, I'm, I support. guess I, then I don't we think don't... the community can support that figure. I'm hearing you say that we yeah. can have that meeting. I would gladly sit down as a board and discuss where everybody wants to be. Okay. Tom. I don't think we have a valid number. I think we have a number that's 24% contingency in it. So it takes us from 25 to 32. I don't know how to take a thing here and a thing there and take 32 to 25. On the other hand, we can do that if it's a tw if twenty six is the real number. Um, I'm I think they owe us a real number. Um, I an expanded an expanded estimate like like uh, Ryan was talking about, and a valid number, um, twenty four percent contingency plus a million dollars for a, a, a CM, um, and we saw that number five minutes before the meeting started. Right. We were not able to ask any questions right. about it or get any justification to it. And we still don't have. Yeah. It's been. It's what, been. Weeks. You're still not answering my question. I am answering your question. I'm not going to answer your question until I know what we're buying. If okay. We're, if I'm looking, no. Thank let you. me finish. All right. If we're buying a 32 million dollar building and it looks like that, that's one thing. If we're buying a 25 million dollar building and it looks like that, that's a complete another thing. If it's a 27 million dollar project, I understand. Then we all can that. get there. But mm -hmm. but we're 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 taking blind shots and we're not getting the support from our professionals. Well, the one figure, Terry, that really stuck out was the project manager. I mean, we don't pay the superintendent right. near that much, and he has way more responsibility in the school district than that project manager is going to have. And he estimated that seven hundred and fifty thousand off, the, off the top of my head. I get all the figures. Seven eighty five. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that stuck out. That threw the red flag right there. Where did he pull that number from? Right. Send it. Do I need to restate my question so it's clear? Yeah, restate your question because I I can we have want to say five hundred things. Are you okay with having a meeting to decide whether how much money the board's willing to spend or we're willing to spend, and then when you think the school can be occupied? That's the two questions. Yes, I'm willing to have that meeting, and I'm willing to spend whatever it's going to take because we cannot just put a band-aid on that building put some modulars back on and put a band-aid on that building and 
expect this community to have any any faith or trust in us. We we need to do it. It's going to hurt. We need to do it. And it's going to take, it's not going to be August of 24 when those kids are back. It's just not. Yeah. I, I'm willing to have that meeting. Uh, I'm willing to have that meeting. My problem is, I think this board, like a lot of boards, we do a lot of talking. Then we commit to something. Then we rethink that commit, commitment and we discuss it some more and things get delayed and they keep getting delayed and they keep getting delayed and nothing gets solved. We need to rip off the band-aid and just commit. That's yep. it. Thank you. I disagree. Okay. We cannot agree to a project that isn't finalized and we don't have a real number, although we were expected to have a real number that, that counted. Okay, so I agree that we should be we should be well along the way, but I do not agree with folding up and saying whatever they want to charge, whatever whatever it's going to come in at, whatever cost it's going to be, and all the extras that are showing up here. Okay, let me give an example. This past week, I ran over a manhole cover that some com some contractor had left out in the middle of the road. So did four other vehicles. Now, I can either get my man my tire fixed. Or I could wait for the contractor that left the manhole cover to, to reimburse me for a tire. Or I could wait for PennDOT to reimburse me for a tire. So, Either way, there's going to be waiting unless I get my tire fixed and then go after the vehicle. So, so, so let, me, let me just interject one thing here. You guys are starting to have the discussion that I want to have, but I want to have it with the full board, with, with Sue and with, with Julia. Well, Sue and the only, Julia's on. Uh, are they both on? Yeah. Okay. The point is that there is a divergence of opinion here on these two critical issues. How much are we willing to spend and how quickly do we want the building occupied? And when you have that level of divergence on a board like this, then you have to take it to the board level to come to a board decision so that, that we are all speaking, you know, and whether we agree or disagree, whatever the decision of the board is, then that's what we do to move, move the project forward regardless. Okay, to your question, um, and let's try to get that resolved first, is whether to set up that, that formal meeting to do that or have that discussion, and we can have that relatively quickly. We could have it next week. We could have it the, the, the night of the 5th, or we could have it some night right immediately right, after, right afterwards, Terry. So, you know. Yeah, that, that's all I'm trying to get to. Okay, and I understand that. And I understand that. And I know there are a lot of strong opinions on this. The, the central question is, are we willing to have that discussion prior to the um, uh, availability of the additional uh, review of, the, of, of Bucar Horn's uh, project, or, or are we not? And that's, that's really the central right. question. Right. And it looks like Cinda is willing to, Tammy is willing to, Ron is willing to, Tom, I'm not sure where you were at. Uh, he says no. I need, I need, I need, I need the information okay. that we deserve to have. All right, Jim. I'm willing to have the meeting because I, I think a lot of, I'm not criticizing, but a lot of people in the room are really looking at this from a very backwards point of view. I don't understand that point of view. When you go and buy a house, you don't have all the hubris in the world and say, "Well, this is how much I'm going to spend." You, you figure out how much you can spend. Um, I am not willing to support any tax increase for. For any amount um so i think to have a meeting to discuss what we can afford it doesn't require any price list we need to know what we can afford right. um i think that that meeting should have been done a long time ago because this is ballooning out of proportion yeah we we're short 18 million um when you deal in a budget that's as big as our budget i think those numbers sometimes become fake but that's 18 million dollars and that tax increase uh, guide that we got from Jared, there is no tax increase that even comes close to 18 million. So it's it's a moot point. We should not put this on the taxpayers, who a lot of us promised that we wouldn't raise taxes under any circumstance. We just gave the teachers a raise because we want good teachers. Um, if we continue to burden this community, we're not going to have a community for the good teachers to teach. So. We should have that meeting and we should figure out what our budget should be. 
Uh, Terry, Julia and Elijah have both raised their hands. Yeah. Julia? Yeah, thanks, Terry. I, I put a comment into the comment section. Since Elijah's on the call, I would like to know when these numbers are going to be. I mean, you know, I've been expecting them for a long time. So when are we going to get the, num the review numbers? So uh, a couple of things. We, we have sent over the documentation uh, that was requested for backup on the um, on a couple of things. The, the explanation of our additional services, as well as um, our first pass at the breakdown of the soft costs um, and the breakdown of the of the construction estimate, uh, again, to our best knowledge, our best ability at this point. Um, this is the <clears throat> the soft costs are are not finalized. And this is something that we do need to discuss with the district. Uh, again, we put in, I think, a number of placeholders here. But um, for the clerk of works, for instance, um, the number that we submitted was 142,000. And I can walk through how that was that was uh, created, along with a number of these other values. But um, these are uh, numbers that need to be confirmed with the district in, in terms of uh, exactly what you're looking for here. But um, it is it is surprising for us, at least to hear um, I, I understand that there's uh, a lot of pushback on whenever we hear numbers like 33 million, um, which is again considering 30 percent on of soft costs on top of the the hard construction costs as we've been talking about to date. Um, now, uh, as as Tom mentioned, we do have a lot of contingency in here. We have. Um, close to six million dollars of contingency in here for uh, escalation, inflation, um, change orders, and then this more nebulous number. But it's it seemed to serve us well. This COVID and pandemic factor. I mean, before it was this is all. I guess you could call it residual from COVID and and the pandemic. What we're seeing in terms of um, in terms of lead times, the labor shortages, that sort of thing. But um, it, it most of that has to go has to do with uh, deal with how how much risk you're willing to take going into this, and how much you believe you need to carry as a contingency. And we're trying to be as helpful as we can in, in keeping that number on the conservative side. Um, but that is something that we can flex, but that we. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think anyone in this room um, or or anyone in our office truly knows. So we're just trying to put in as what we can, what we've seen, and and again to our best ability. But it is going to be conservative um, to cover the project. Elijah, this is Waller. A question for you. Um, you seem to indicate that uh, some information was sent to the district. Uh, regarding the backup of the additional fees. Yeah. Um, do you know when that was sent? Um, I know I know uh, we had sent some information last week and then we sent some additional information today. That was sent to Brian. Well, again, I... Um, okay. Um, just the, just the yeah, I didn't okay. see anything today. Was it sent to the whole board? I think so. As far as as far as I know, um, everything has is still between solicitors. Um, so I'm not sure. He forward Ron repack forwarded to all the board members at like yeah. three thirty or so. so. Oh, I haven't looked okay. at this. Four thirteen. Four thirteen. No, I don't have. No, is it? Is it? I don't have it. I just. Can't. No. All right. Well, well, right. we'll make sure that all the board members get that information. <laughs> Um, that's what I wanted to check on, Elijah, whether that information actually was sent. It wasn't sent to everybody. It was sent to Walter, myself, and Tom. So we'll get it to the rest of the board. And copied Mike. Okay, right. Joey, would, do you want to answer the question that's on the table? 
Well, it sounds like we have numbers. I mean, I tend to, I, I don't really disagree with anything anybody said. I so, certainly, I don't mind having a meeting. We always have plenty to talk about. So yeah, but I, I, I agree, um, Rod, Jim, uh, Tom, it's just, the, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see myself coming in at what we can afford at 32 million. And I don't think it's fair to, to, to roll this back off on the taxpayers. Besides, it doesn't raise us enough. So I think we're going to have to figure out what Ron was saying sooner or later about yeah. breaking this project down appropriately. And as for the contingency, I don't want to do anything that's not customary in this type of a, I mean, it just seems awfully high to me to have a 25% of the project's contingency. I mean, my goodness gracious. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Sue. Yeah, I'm willing to meet uh, to look at it and discuss. I'm uh, looking forward to getting the email that shows the number breakdown. And I think that'll be helpful. I, I agree with Cinda that we do need to get this building going and it is going to cost us money, but you know, I want to save the taxpayers as much as possible. Yeah, and the number breakdown is not the estimate broken down. It's it's increase in costs, I think I saw, and then you know, some hours of Bucard Horn and CJL for Walter. We're we have seven to one right now in favor of having the meeting. It, it, yeah. So what I was gonna suggest was um uh, since Monday night seems to be our favorite night of the week, um, given that we've got Thanksgiving towards the end of this week, uh, it probably makes the most sense to uh, set something up for next Monday night. What all do we have Monday night? We have a board meeting. And no, we meeting. don't have anything Monday oh, night. Oh, okay, nothing. There's nothing that I unless except deer season. Deer yeah, deer season, deer season right. and. Oh no. I, I didn't no, know whether in charity now. Cam, right. Cammy had the uh, outreach that tonight. Was tonight. That was tonight. Okay, so you have nothing There's for nothing Monday night, Monday. next Monday. Sir, I just remind you, we will have to pay custodial staff to come in extra that day for the board meeting because that is a uh, district holiday that nobody is scheduled to work that day. Do well, we, do we need janitors? Um, I'll tell you what, then um, 24 hours probably won't make that much of a difference. If we can't do it Monday night, uh, we'll set something up for Tuesday. But let me talk to Mike about this and um, uh, get his input um, on the scheduling, Jared. But I appreciate the, um, the input there. Is that okay with the board? Set it up for Monday if we can, and if not, slide it over to Tuesday. I'm okay with it. I work Tuesday. Oh, you work Tuesday. Yeah, Monday Monday's better, and I don't know why we we need, we're not going to make that. <coughs> decision, need a janitor, okay. Some reason they we can have do work. Wednesday too. Let me let me talk with Monday's better. Let me talk with Mike and uh, see what um, what we can do here to to make that happen on Monday. And Jared, you guys are all off on Monday, right? We we would be yes, sir. But if the board wants to have a meeting, we have a meeting. I think we should let the people have their time off. That's is it, what I think too. is it going to be that much difficult to have it next Monday, a week from? It's another week. Another week. Well, that does, if we wait till the 5th, that does delay it an, an additional week. So that would be the issue. Oh, that's going into the 5th. Yeah, I was missing a week. We can always do it all cyber. <laughs> then nobody had to come in. Yeah, but it, I agree. The meeting, would be vir the meeting would have to be virtual on Monday night, wouldn't it? I mean, if they're not, a, I mean, there's no, I don't see why we all have to sit down together necessarily. Well, well I, it would be I better. Should. It would be better eyeball to eyeball on this, on this discussion, Julia. Um, well, I just mean, if you want to meet Monday night, I mean, it seems to me you could do it virtually without bothering the custodial staff. It's let, me have, let, me there. Have, let me have a conversation with, um, let me have a conversation with Mike and um, um, well, then Tuesday or Wednesday or something. Yeah, we'll get the word out. Jim, Jim, are you working both Tuesday and Wednesday? Yep. <laughs> you okay. Tuesday. Uh, and Wednesday. <laughs> okay, so I don't um, work Thanksgiving. I don't work Saturday, Sunday, Monday. 
So, so let me ask you, just, just, just devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. um, what's your drop dead time for leaving to go to work? 6.30. 6.30. So if we were to do something at four o'clock or whatever, then we could, we could possibly make that work, um, work for you. Okay. I Lisa, work until 4.30. Okay. So 4.30 to 6.30, we can still make, try to make that happen. You know, 4.45, right. it'll take me 15 minutes to get across town. Oh, so it's going to take us more than 15 minutes to just to discuss opening the meeting. So I think you're good. <laughs> so, so let me talk to Mike a little bit about this. Um, and, and we'll try to get something set up that will accommodate as many of the board members as we possibly can. Okay, okay any, anything else on Eisenhower? Uh, nothing that I know of. Okay, thanks. East Pike exterior door replacement. This, we've discussed this a couple times. Janie, assuming uh, you're covering this. We had a gentleman out, uh, did a lot of measuring. Uh, he has not gotten back to me yet with some pricing, but we're, we're working on that. Okay, so, so we'll carry this to next. We'll carry that. To the next meeting, as soon as I have those, I will share those and we can look at that. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Update on Ben Franklin electrical service relocation. Had some discussion. Uh, we we now have a request in for uh, oh, my favorite. Let's see what they actually call it. It's a uh, request for. It's a design request. We get a number, we're, we're officially in the system uh, that is in the hands of the engineer now. Uh, so they're gonna work that all up, which will, uh, the end run of that, will end up with a cost estimate. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I was cautioned when I first inquired about this, once they put a number to that, uh, nothing is done nothing is bought for that project until it's paid for yeah. up front yeah. that's just how first first energy works right. uh, so they will put a number to that we we already have a uh, an estimate as accurate as it can be from uh scott anderson for what we would be responsible for on our side yeah so it's all in the works it's yeah. in motion uh all right, we'll I, carry I was, this. I was cautioned by the gentleman, the engineer from uh, First Energy. Pedelec, First Energy, whatever they call themselves, yeah. uh, that if we're going to move forward with this, uh, pretty much by March, we need to know for sure yeah. to make it happen in the summer. Right. One of my initial conversations with him, he said, well, I'll come out, we'll We'll do a site survey and I'll mark where, where the pole will be. And I said, what do you mean pole? And he said, well, from where it comes off the street, we'll put a, full, a pole 50 feet away. I said, well, we already have a pole. And I said, don't quote me, but I think the, the board's direction on this, they want to see it come clean from the street to the building, all underground. They're already... You know, we already have that, and that's part of the reason for this right. to be to be done. And he said, "Well, that can be done, but you'll pay for it." Yeah. So that but, will but be there, in the numbers. But there isn't any reason to do to pay anything to go underground and get three quarters of the way and then have a wire. Yeah. So, and I told him, "Don't hold me to that." But that was my. I yeah, thought uh, where we were. I I could see them maybe having to place a pole in order to put a transformer. Okay, so they can put a pole on like our side of the fence, but they will have to put a pole up on the street because it'll have to go to a different spot. Yeah, and they'll hang a uh, transfer there and then when we dig a ditch to that pole. I told him that was my feeling on the direction yeah. that you wanted to go. Well, you, yeah, that's what Scott like, gave us was from digging a ditch all the yes. way down to the vault. You'd have to put an underground vault in. Yes. So that's yeah. what Anderson with the gave us. on the transformer. Right. Or, what do you mean underground vault? Well, you'd have to put it on the end if it went to the building. Pad that's, mount that's transformer. Transformer. Oh, okay, a, a pad mount transformer. Yeah. You're, not, yes. you're not bearing the transformer. Okay. No. Um, so what's, what's, what do you need? Um, well, he submitted the application they, they, and they're they, working on a design. Yeah. They're going to provide us a design and an estimate. 
I have they to give you a time a few, few minor things. Uh, who who can officially sign for the right of way? See, it's a 16 foot right of way, and uh, basically, who's uh, who can who's financially responsible? Yeah. So I'm going to send yeah, them water stroke, information. Stroke the industries. <laughs> well, now, well, I got the pole for and, them. You know, if it comes down to it, I could certainly uh, donate a utility pole up to about 55 feet in yeah, height yeah. If, if that's a, um, if that helps it, any. It but, is all uh, in motion. Yeah. Um, any idea of when they, they're going to have something back to you? I, he didn't really state when, but he said when it will you, be out. Good. More than likely on a weekend, yeah. Because I even volunteered to meet him. He said, "Well, I'll probably come on a weekend." I said, yeah. "I don't have a life anyway." So <laughs> let him know. Let me know. How soon will you be able to get your all your ducks lined up and get the paperwork in that? They, it's it's officially in now. Okay, that's the only thing we control is yeah. submitting the application. You can elect us whatever they want to, whatever schedule. Um, my recommendation is that you do this as early as you possibly can. And get things moving because they have a way of, of, of getting distracted by some hurricane somewhere. And next thing you know, all the transformers are in Florida. Right. Uh, anything else on this? While you're talking, Cheney, is there any update on the Eisenhower uh, asbestos testing? The tests were performed. Uh, it was a few weeks ago. I do not have yet have test results. Uh, I will make a call to Scotty and see where they're at with that. But they did, while they were there, they spent like six hours there, uh, resampled everything in the building just to make sure, you know, because of where we're going, we need to know. And, and there were, uh, I asked him for at least six soil samples in the center crawl space, the whole length of the building. Uh, and he said that was, he was going to do that as part yeah. of that would anyways okay all right moving on to number five the car property management is this jared it is sir i'll cover that one um i have reached out to a couple local real estate companies um in indiana to see if anybody's interested in helping us to manage that um everybody seems pretty busy and not really willing to take on any additional properties right now I did have a follow-up conversation with Wally Putt probably two weeks ago um, just to make sure kind of what the responsibilities are if, as far as managing that property. Um, and the biggest place where they get involved is really when we need to find a new renter, helping us find that renter. And we've had somebody in that um, in the property probably for over three years now. Um, they've been there a while, so they seem pretty happy. Um, typically, when there are issues at the house, they would call Wally Putt, just to, and then he would call us. Um, so in the interim, not saying that we don't eventually need somebody, um, but what can happen is the renter can either call myself or Cheney if they're having issues. Um, Wally Putt is going to forward me, because I know Cheney's guys are very busy just taking care of district maintenance issues um so wally is going to forward me kind of his contact information for the people the local contractors who he's been working with to help with um, maintenance up there if there has been issues um so maybe instead of cheney's guys having to go do that if we're contacted we can contact one of these local contractors to run up and and help her out if there are issues at the property um so Really, we will take on some of that responsibility in the interim if we, you know, we're still looking for if we can find an actual realty company to manage the property. Okay. Thanks, Jared. Anything? Hey, uh, did you uh, ask Rod Green from Good News Realty about it, Jared? Rod Green I did, be, did not, sir. That is not one that I reached out to. Well, he might be willing. I mean, I could reach out to Rod if you wanted me to. He has Good News Realty in town. I know he did some property manage it down our way on our, our building in Luzerne and that when we needed renters and stuff, he does yeah. it for us. Yeah, if you want to reach out to him, sir, give me his contact information to see if he would be interested. That would be great. Okay, I'll give him a call tomorrow and I'll, I'll get back to you, Jared. Thank you. Okay, thanks.
Number six, high school stadium mass lighting discussion. Uh, we have we had uh, a couple visits with a couple different companies. Uh, have numbers from one. Uh, should have the the second here soon. Not where I hoped we would be, but it's like everything uh, nowadays. Uh, but uh, we're looking at, and we started from the get of looking how we could do this in stages, football field, then you know, maybe walking lights, and then maybe uh, soccer after that. Uh, okay. Trying to see how that best fits. All right. but, uh, and you probably don't want to say the first price until you get the second price estimate. Yeah, I'd like okay. to have some, yeah. something to bear apples for apples. If you yeah. want to give us a heart attack. Yeah. Okay, so we'll carry that. To and so, next. so just briefly, Cheney, what is the issue with the lights at this point? The the maintenance cost it, it is what the the issue we had right before football season started. We had uh, four lights out: two on one fixture, one and one. Just on the football field, we were really real concerned about soccer because they had other they, than one tournament, they really don't play their under light. Uh, to have four lights repaired, it was $19,000. And we had the materials that was just labor. Most of that cost was the rent of a very uh, long extending lift because nobody climbs anymore. Then we found a company that they have four climbers. <coughs> and we did it much, much, much cheaper than $19,000. Of course, between the time we looked at it and the time we got here, we had a few more out, uh, but we had enough materials to do that. They got a large portion of them. They didn't, didn't get them all above the football field because it got very windy in the afternoon and then it becomes a hazard for the guys to climb. But okay, so it was well lit enough for this season. So, So the question that I would ask is if the maintenance costs are becoming an issue and maybe you and Jared could get together and kind of do a, like a cost analysis of how many dollars we've spent on the last four or five years per year and and your estimate for the next four or five years and then kind of sit down and say okay you know here's really what the cost difference is going to be and um and the other thing I want to bring to you is the return on investment. Yes. The savings on the, because it's going to be a much, much decreased current draw. So my, 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 my point is, my point is that, you know, that kind of an analysis helps us with that. Even though we may all fall over and break our pencils when we hear the quote, um, if the amount you're going to save is in, you know, over some short period of time equal to that, then, um, if it has a reasonable payback, it, correct. it dampens that the, a lot. The difficulty with what you're asking is, is he's, re he's replacing lights with lights, with like for light as they burn out. And so that's a problem. And some of the, some of the, some of the infrastructure supporting those lights is also weakened over the last 30, 40 years. Um, so you're... To, to do an individual light, it's nineteen thousand. To do twenty individual lights, it's twenty-two thousand. Um, so um, he he could go in and replace all the lights with the same type of lights we have uh, at X dollars, or we could upgrade to the LEDs at Y dollars. What what we're currently using over there right now, uh, there are only like two lighting companies even left making those. They're because everybody's moving to LED, so their production of those has fallen off dramatically, and, and they're actually hard to acquire. Yeah, I'm, and, and I'm not discounting anything that Tom said, but that kind of an analysis, though, on the return on investment, uh, the difference in the cost of maintaining and the existing what the replacement, all helps us in justifying um, an expenditure an expenditure of big, you know, it's big. 100 grand or whatever it's going to wind up being. Well, one of the simple things that might be able to do to get an analysis is 
if somebody had a contact in uh, Brookville up here because they went to that with their football field this year. So they surely would have a figure what they spent on electric last year for that field and what they spent for electric this year. Because I think that's what you're looking at is what your cost is going to be down the road on so, electric, not only the bulbs, but on what you're saving on the electric. Like should be you saving from what I understand going to LEDs. Electric is certainly part of the discussion, but I was looking at it more from that holistic mm -hmm. cost of the current bulbs, the cost of the electric. Um, on these LEDs, I'm assuming that you get longer service life out of them than the current type of bulb that you have, you know, all that, all that sort of thing that plays into the reason for the upgrade. Yeah. That's the one field I know around here they did. I don't know if everybody's seen any other fields, but that field they did it this year prior to football season. So I know they ran it all football season. I don't know if any other ones around here did it. But, uh, it's something to see because they're only about this big and this long from where it looks. It might be a lot bigger when you get up there, but they're just narrow and yeah. long. They're not like the great big lights you see on the football fields anymore. Anything and else? I love the scene lit up. I like being able to see it. I didn't yeah. get a chance. Anything else on this? So I'll keep this on the agenda to carry to the next meeting. Last item is transportation, purchasing district vans for athletic and other purposes. I think this is the third time we've talked about this. Uh, anything new, of course? Um, Jared, do you have anything new on this? I don't have anything new, sir. I just, we, I don't know that the committee has ever made a decision on it. Um, if they have, I apologize for putting it back on there, and I can certainly take it off if we have a decision. I can tell you that um, I've already been reached out to by uh, the senior high wrestling team. They're going to have some upcoming tournaments in Jan end of January, February. Also, the senior high music department is wanting to go on a couple of to a couple of festivals in January, and this certainly will come in handy for those. Terry, if I'm not mistaken, didn't we approve doing it? I think we. I think quite a while ago. I think we approved taking it to the board. Yeah, didn't we do it at the board? I don't remember. To tell you the truth. I'd have to ask Jerry. I thought we voted on that at the board though to go ahead and buy to. Hello. We did not approve anything at the board, sir. That huh? at so, the board level, I, I wasn't even sure if the committee had made a decision on it. That's what we said. So, so Jared, did did we get any quotes on the on? Um, um, or do we have any specs, Mike, on the exactly what you're looking for uh, as far as the size, um, extra features? You know, we um, talked about the size. We talked about, you know, having a big enough you could take that back seat out for equipment and still run 15 feet or whatever. Plus, send it for last times to get it yeah. Keller. You know. Yeah, we talked about wrapping yeah. it. All right. You know, putting a Indian logo on the side, having it wrapped. Logo. Can you? I don't have my laptop here. I, can you, Tom, can you look at the notes from last meeting? What's right? What's the minutes? Yeah. yeah. It's been a It's been long before oh, it, that. Yeah. It's been. There's a couple meetings. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think we voted on it. I know we didn't. I don't think at we the voted board on level. it. So, remember. so why don't we just have Jared put it on the agenda to the board? Okay. The quote that we have that we. The quote we discussed the last time um, was 55000 for a van. That's the quote that I got from TriStar off of a state contract. And we can and we can buy it off a state contract. We don't have to go to bid? Or would you we do not, no. Would you rather bid it? Probably not. Jared? I, I would, no. I'd rather use state contract. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Anything at. I'd say is, yeah, because it's local. Okay. We can keep it That's nice. Um, says the committee continued their discussion on the possibility of purchasing full vans. No recommendation was made. That's why it's and that off. is the latest minutes that are on there is October 17th. Well, that would have been the last meeting. That's the last meeting. Okay. So we want meeting before that. We continued the discussion until we had a number of how many trips and how useful they were. Right. That we feel we've talked about all that and we're ready to make a hundred and ten thousand dollar did did we get um does the minute say that we got that information on the number of trips or that evaluation that's, that's all it says i, I remember <coughs> dan, dan, dan was provided, here jared provided you with some information with some numbers as far as 
what it would have cost for those trips to be contracted out versus the cost of utilizing those vehicles. I don't remember that. Because you know, we talked also in that, if you remember, that the coaches are only going to be allowed to drive them yeah. under the insurance. We talked about the insurance too. Yeah. Our insurance covers them driving it. With, right. a little, with, a, with a limited number of students. Right. And then I think Kevin, the principal, he talked about they could use it for training and you know stuff like that. You know, taking kids from right. school to school. You know. Yeah, going from school to school. We talked about it. They had to go. They could use it. So, IUP even so, use so I don't remember getting any information about number of trips. What, what he's talking about, the number of trips or anything. That doesn't mean I did. Somebody I know he talked about the baseball team. How many times we could use it for baseball? But we could we could get all that information at the board level, and and have a vote on it and deal with it. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, we, we we might as well do it there. So we get get our act together for the board meeting and, and put it on the agenda. But I do think we need to know, Mike, some backup on this. Um, again, some sort of a rudimentary analysis of same you know, thing we were talking about the lights. Yeah. That it's cost. Okay effective for us to do yes. I, I i'll share you with the committee again the spreadsheet that was shared at the last committee that breaks down what the annual cost of, to buy the the vans would be and then what we feel we would save in transportation costs yeah we need to, we need to have that jared thank you yep it was shared at the last committee but i'll share it again so we'll do that at the board meeting then with the motion during the debate and discussion. Sounds Not good. a problem, Terry. Okay. The only other thing, uh, the horse man bollard. Is that up? It is not up. It's sitting in our shop. I can't get the excavator to return my calls. Wait a minute, what's this now? The it's excavator. A bollard? The bollard for the playground at the horse oh. man. We have it. Just Need to get somebody to put it in the ground for us. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, that requires equipment that we do not have. Yeah. Who do you who are you, who are you trying to hold? Uh, help. Boy. Are there not other excavators in town? Um, Start looking. Ron Marsh. Um, one winners. Brian Sadler. Brian Sadler. Yeah, Terry's retired and he has a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> we can't pay it. Huh? That's okay. okay. I'm okay with that. So you're okay with that? You're okay. I got a backhoe. You they can tell me where to think. <laughs> All right. Anything anybody else have anything for the good of the order? No. Any questions? Anything we missed? Because it sounds like we're gonna possibly have a meeting next week sometime. Okay, thank you all. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Yep. Good night, everybody. Good night.